Do me a favor at the top of today's notes. Can you write Sokotoa down for me, please? Sokotoa, so we know how to spell it, and we're going to need it today. All right, real quick, what was the S for again? Sine, the C, cosine, and the T was tangent, right? All right, so those were the three I showed you. All right, those were the three I showed you. There's actually three more, okay, other than sine, cosine, and tangent. There are three more. That's what I'm going to introduce today for a total of six. All right, but it's not, you don't have to memorize a new word. The three new functions I'm going to show you actually go with sine, cosine, tangent. All right, the first one I'm going to introduce, and this is up here as well, is called secant, S-E-C-A-N-T. Secant, it's abbreviated S-E-C. How do you find it? You take cosine and you flip it. All right, so think about this. If cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, how are you going to find this new one, secant? It's the reciprocal. I'm going to flip it. Now I'm going to do what over what? hypotenuse over adjacent. So in Sokotoa, I'm going to have you put secant right underneath cosine. Okay? Right underneath cosine, secant. That tells me, oh, hey, 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 you need to flip cosine to get secant. So instead of doing adjacent over hypotenuse, I'm doing hypotenuse over adjacent. Secant is flipping cosine. Next one, cosecant, cosecant. That's flipping sine, okay? So you think about it. If sine was opposite over hypotenuse from Sokotoa, what's cosecant going to be? Flip it, hypotenuse over opposite. And yes, I'm going to have you put cosecant right underneath sine. So cosecant, flipping sine, secant, flipping cosine. Now, so you don't get these two mixed up, because the next one's easy. It's easy to know it goes with tangent. So you don't mix these two up. Here's my little device to remember which one goes with which. S-E-C. Yes, it's an abbreviation for secant, but it's an abbreviation for another word in the English language. Second. So it goes with the... Second one in Sokotoa. That's how I remember it. All right, that's a good little device. SEC is another abbreviation for the word second. So it goes with the second one in Sokotoa. That's how I know it goes with cosine and not sine. And the third and final new one I'm going to show you today, cotangent. Cotangent. I don't think we have to, you know, that's not really too tough to remember what it goes with. It has the word right in it, right? Tangent, cotangent. So think about it. What's tangent as far as Sokotoa goes? That's opposite over adjacent. So cotangent's going to be flip it, adjacent over opposite. Yep. So C, and that's abbreviated COT, cotangent. So one more time cosecant, flip sine, secant, flip cosine. Cotangent, flip tangent. Those are all <laughs> six that we're responsible for. All right, let's try them out here. Let's try in a basic right triangle, which I can use Sokotoa for. Uh, find all six trig functions, all of them now. Sine, cosine, tangent, and the three new ones I found you. All right. Uh, oh, before we even start... You know you're going to have to need that missing side, right? How do you find the missing side? Okay, go ahead, you and your group. Let's go. Do a little Pythag to find that missing side. You know I'm going to need it eventually, so why not just figure it out at the beginning?
Also, quarter ends a week from today, with or without your quizzes you're missing. You getting the whole number here? No, yes. Whole number, four, yep. So four is the hypotenuse, so we'll put four up top. All right, let's find all six now. Let's find all six. Uh, I'll, I won't ask, I'm gonna start it. Uh, how about sign? And it's going what here? From for angle A. So make sure we're looking at angle A now when we do all these. Sine of A. If I use Sokotoa, Sokotoa will be what? For sine. Okay, here we go. Opposite side over hypotenuse. Opposite. Square root of seven over hypotenuse. It's okay to have a radical in the numerator. That's fine. That's fine. I don't need to change anything. It's just when it goes in the denominator. All right, while we're here, why don't we find a new one? What what partners up with sine? Which one of my new ones I showed you partners up with sine? Cosecant. Co so while we're here, we might as well just do it, right? Because how do I find cosecant? Whatever sine was, flip it. So might as well do it right now. Whatever sine was, I flip it. That's cosecant, the reciprocal of sine. Four over... Radical seven, but we've been down here how many times? What's the deal here? Okay, can't have a radical in the denominator. I'm going through this quick because we've done this a ton. I'm sorry if you haven't practiced it, but there it is. On top, we should have four radical seven, and on the bottom, seven. There's cosecant, four radical seven over seven. All right, hopefully everyone's awake now. Let's get to the numbers. Who's got the highest one in here? Uh, no, the numbers I've been giving you. Or if we need to count off again, we can count off again. 15, 15 perfect. Okay, here we go. Next up, uh, cosine. Let's do cosine next. Cosine A. All right, what sides do I need here for cosine? Uh, whoever has 15, cosine, what do I need to find? Adjacent over, adjacent over hypotenuse, good. So give me those two side lengths, adjacent <laughs> and hypotenuse. 13? Um, three, over four. three over four, perfect. Stop me if you want me to show you where they're coming from. And then probably right after, what's the uh, partner of cosine? Secant, SEC, second. Secant. So if I just flip cosine, what's the secant value? Uh, 14, secant value? Uh, four over three. Four thirds. Just got to remember what goes with what. All right, two more. Tangent. Tangent. What two sides do I need for tangent? Uh, here we go. 14 again. Yep. Nope, nope, nope. I'll have somebody else give me opposite and adjacent. Uh, one, opposite and adjacent. Yep, don't need to change that because the radical's in the numerator. And now here we go with cotangent. Cotangent. Two. Um, uh, flip them. Yep. Three over radical seven. It's a uh, radical seven out. Good. That's what I said. Not seven, but 
Radical. radical seven, right? Get the radical out of the denominator. So what do you got? Three radical seven over seven. Yeah. All right. Any questions there? I uh, still didn't answer the whole question, though. Anybody see what I'm missing in the directions? Find the actual angle A, right? Okay, we have enough ability to do this. Anytime we find an angle, where are we going on the calculator? Inverse, right? We're going inverse. All right, uh, you pick, right? I wouldn't try one of the new options, but anybody sine, cosine? You want to do cosine just because it says three-fourths? You got it. And we're not, we don't have to worry, look, hey, we don't have to worry about what quadrant we're in. It's a right triangle. I'll just take whatever the calculator gives me here. So angle A is going to be inverse, what do we pick, cosine? And what are you plugging in now? Three over four, yep. I don't have to worry about what quadrant I'm in. I'm not even in a quadrant. I need an angle less than 90, though, because I'm in a, I only have 180 degrees. And it says round it to the nearest degree. 41 degrees, done. All right. Biggest thing today, got to make sure I know which one pairs with which. Any issues on all these up here? Because we're still going to work with uh, everything we've done. I want to work with the new, these new three with everything we've done. All right. Where are they positive? Where are they negative? All right. What quadrants, right? We've done this before. What's the device we have to help us out? What's, what's positive and negative where? All... Students, what's the S mean? What's this S mean in the second? What about it? Sign is positive. What about everything else? Okay. What's the T mean in the third quadrant? Tangents what? Positive in the third. And then C in the fourth tells me? Cosine's positive in the fourth. So go ahead right now. On your own, do cosine, sine, and tangent. See if you can not figure them out. We've gone over them before. Put a plus and a minus sign in for all the quadrants. And then we'll talk about the three new ones. What's the deal with those? Should hopefully go pretty quick. Okay, I'm going to get going. Uh, first quadrant, uh, you should have all pluses. Everything's positive in the first. Second quadrant, cosine's negative, sine positive, tangent negative. Uh, what else we got? Third quadrant, negative, negative, positive. And then in the fourth quadrant, let's see, I have positive, negative, negative. All right, all good. All right, so let's make this real easy on each other. These three new ones, whatever they're paired up with, that's where they're positive. So first quadrant, what do we still know in the first quadrant? Everything, including these new ones. Everything is always positive in the first. Everything's positive in the first. All right, ready? What's positive in the second quadrant? Sine, and it's now pair, which was, what do we pair with? Cosine. What's this called, CSC? Cosecant. All right, so yes, sine is positive in the second. And so is its pair, which is cosecant. So we have cotangent. What do you think then? Oh, well, remember, sine, sine, and its pair, which is what? What went with sine? What do we write underneath SOH in Sokotoa? What always pairs up with sine? Look back if we need to. Let's, here we go. What pairs up with sine? Okay, so that's the only other thing that's positive in the second is sine and its pair. Everything else, negative, All right? Everything else, negative. So let's try this again. Cotangent in the second, negative. Secant, negative cosecant. There we go, see how this works now. All right, go to the third quadrant. Tangent's positive, and also now we learn what's its pair. Cotangent positive, that green. Cotangent, positive, what about secant? And cosecant. 
so important to know what it pairs up with. And then finally, fourth quadrant, cosine and what's its pairing? Secant, S-E-C, secant. So ready? Cotangent in the fourth? Negative. Secant in the fourth because it pairs with cosine. So they're both positive. And cosecant, here we go. So we can still use this. We just got to also make sure we know what pairs up with each because that'll be also positive in that quadrant. Questions? All right, so if I have cotangent of 340, cotangent of 340, is it going to be positive or negative? Well, let's see. Where's, uh, here we go. Where's 340? 10, where's 340? Quadrant four. Quadrant four, right? So here's where our thinking goes. I'm in quadrant four. Look at there. What's in quadrant four? A C for what? Cosine. And now what? what's paired with cosine? Secant. So only cosine and secant are positive in the fourth. So that means cotangent, negative. One twenty three secant one twenty three. Where's one twenty three? Eleven. Where's one hundred twenty three degrees? Second sine and what pairs with sine? We got to look back. We got to look back. Cosecant C S C. So sine and cosecant. So that means secant will be negative. And what about cosecant? 184. Where's 184? 11 again, 184. Third quadrant. What's positive in the third? Tangent and what's its uh, running mate? Cotangent. All right, so cosecant's going to be? Negative. Yep. Now, let me show you this. I don't. This may help you or hurt. I don't know. What goes with cotangent? So maybe if you just want to write tangent and do tangent of 340, it's going to be the same answer, right? Because they're both the same value. They're both the same sign in the same quadrant, all right? Secant, maybe it helps to write cosine above and do cosine 123 and answer it that way. It's the same. Same thing here, cosecant, maybe it would have helped to write sine above it because it's still going to be the same. I tell you that because maybe it may make number four a little easier. Where is cotangent less than, what do we say, less than a fancy word for? Negative. Negative. And cotangent goes with what? So if you want, maybe it'll help you. Right, tangent on top. Where's tangent negative and what's secant go with? SEC, second. Cosine. Cosine. Greater than zero would be positive. So maybe that helps you out too. All right, Cotan where's tangent negative? Cosine, positive. Just give me the quadrant. Three, ASTC, tangent, negative, cosine, positive. What quadrant am I in? Cosine's positive, and at the same time, tangent's negative. <laughs> tangent's positive in the third. That's what the T means, Elizabeth. That's what the T means. Cosine, positive. So give me the two quadrants cosine's positive in. Four and one. one. Out of those two quadrants now, where's tangent negative? What's the A mean again? All. So nothing, nothing is negative in the first quadrant. Where's tangent negative now out of these two quadrants? Quadrant. Four. Cosine is positive. That's what the C means. Everything else, negative. We good? So now, going here, which one uh, would I be in? Quadrant four. Where's quadrant four out of these four choices? Two? Three ten. Three ten. Questions there? Got your calculator ready? 
cosecant of 63. How do I do that on my calculator? I hate to break it to you guys. You don't have a cosecant button. Right? You don't have a cosecant button. Well, it's kind of sign, doesn't it? But what goes with cosecant? Signs. Sign. But hey, wait, look at look at what I'm doing here. Cosecant of 63 is not, not equal to the sine of 63. They're not equal to each other. All right, they're not equal. Do you remember what I needed to do at the beginning? How are they related? Cosecant and sine. I got to do what? I got to flip them, right? I got to flip them. So what I need to do here is not sine of 63. I have to flip it and rewrite it as 1 over sine 63. I got to flip it. And that'll give you your value. I have to flip it. So Mr. Carter, yep, go ahead. The cosecant button on the calculator that's useless or? Uh, I didn't know you had a cosecant button. Try it. Is it just regular cosecant? Yes. Okay, let's see if try it out. Maybe we get the right answer. I didn't realize they had those on there for those calculators anyway. Uh, let's see where. Negative, nope. We'll get to my actual answer here. 1.122. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Don't have to worry about it. It's not on yours. It's only on the fancy dancy ones, right, Connor? Yeah. All right. You guys got to flip it. 1.122. Would that be the same as the inverse? No, no, no. Totally different. Okay. Totally different. Yep, not inverse. Inverse finds me the angle. I already know the angle here. Cotangent to 245. So what do I need to flip? Tangent to 245. So I do 1 over tangent 245. Thousandth. I should have went over three decimal, three numbers after the decimal. Uh, what are we getting here? Point four six six. Yep. And then how are you gonna find secant then? What's secant? Flip cosine. cosine. So one over cosine thirty five. Uh, let's see. What are we getting? One point two two. I'm missing a number though. 220. 220. One, zero rounds up. Okay. Questions there? All right, let's see if how well we picked us all up now in these last couple questions. Which of the following here is not in the domain of cosec? All right, let me fix this real quick. Not in the domain means another, I'm not going to ever use that language. I'll use this, undefined. Undefined. I don't get a value. All right, we saw that yesterday with tangent. Can't have a zero in the denominator. All right, so what do you know about, first of all, what do you know about cosecant? I, I flip what? Sign, right? I flip sign. 180. Let's see, 180. Got your calculators? All right. Might as well use them. So I'm going to do not sine of 180, but 1 over sine 180. Do we get a value or no? Okay. That was, there you go. Right at 180. But again, I don't, I don't know that. I don't know how to use my calculator unless I know cosecant goes with 
sine. Okay, if you thought it went with cosine, you probably you probably are not picking that choice. All right, let's do it. Unfortunately, though, your calculators are going to be useless. And this, I was a little disappointed on the quiz yesterday with this. Express your answer in exact form. What's that telling you guys? I know we went over this. No what? Decimals. No decimals. I want fractions and radicals only in exact form. Secant. What do you know about secant? Flip what, Mike? Okay. Flip cosine, right? 60. What do you know about 60? Okay, yep, keep going. All our work this unit. What do you know about, what are you thinking about 60 degrees? What's the coordinate there? One half radical three over two. Perfect. Keep going. Cosine. I'm flipping cosine. Which one's cosine up there? The x value, which is one half. That's not my answer because I got to flip it. So it's going to be two over one. See how this works? All right, you guys have enough knowledge here. So again, cosine, and I'm just going to write this out. I don't expect you to. That's the x coordinate, right? Two R's. X coordinate. Now I'm going to flip it. Two. All right, cotangent, 150. Okay, talk to me. Cotangent. Well, I know I'm going to flip what? Tangent. tangent. Oh, it's going to be a tough one, but we'll get to it. So flip tangent. All right, 150. Where, where are you what are you doing here? Okay, reference angle, which would be? 30. Okay, so I got 30 degrees rocking. Which would be? Radical three over two, one half. Now, from our work yesterday, anybody remember how to find tangent? Tangent, what coordinate over what coordinate? Tangent, if you look back at your notes yesterday, was y over x. So cotangent is going to be x over y. Keep going. What's your coordinate here? Radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. We dealt with these yesterday. How, we deal, how do we do with the, deal with these? Yep, radical 3 over 2, keep it, change the division to multiplication, and do what with the bottom? Flip, 2 over 1. We got some cross outs, right? Cotangent of 150. Nope, 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 nope. We got to make sure we know where we are on the graph. Where's 150? What quadrant? What's the only thing positive in the second? Sine and its partner, which is not cotangent. So what am I trying to tell you here? It should be negative radical 3, right? Because I'm in the second quadrant, and that's where cotangent's negative. That's the little thing we just got to worry about. Uh, ooh, what don't you like about C that we got to change probably real quick? The, it's in radians. Okay. Anybody remember pi over 4 or pi over 4? 45, and I got to multiply it times 3. 3 times 45. I'm actually doing cosecant of 135. All right, let's talk here. What do you want me to flip? Cosecant. Cosecant is flipping. Flipping. 
sine, okay? So we're going to flip sine 135. Reference angle 45, yep. That's our easy one. Radical 2 over 2. Sorry. Radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2. Sine, you said flip sine. Which one's sine? It doesn't matter here, right? But yeah, y. So flip it. Cosecant will be equal to flip the sine, the y value. Two over radical two. And then we're going to have some self-respect, right? Why do I say that? So what do you get on top? Can you? You can't cross off the radical two with the two, but twos can go, yeah. So radical two. Uh, what quadrant are we in? Two. What's positive in the second? Sine and its partner. What's the partner for sine? Cosecant. So I'm going to leave this positive or make it negative? Leave it positive. All right, let's go. Let's truck. I'll come around, help you out. Monday and Tuesday, two days of review. Cosecant 30, right off the bat. Think about what do I need to flip? Find the point and flip it. Should it be positive or negative? Exact value, no decimals.
Was this for like the one point or the only one that I mean two when you're that big? I don't know. It, so I'm, 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 not, I'm done telling you, I'm not giving an answer key. That's why I put it on Google Park for you guys to check. That's all we need to get in the habit of doing.